intertextuality. Nothing exists in a vacuum, and art always draws on some sort of inspiration. These influences may be superficial, impacting only the art and flavor text of a card, like how Rock Spirit and Haniwa are characters included from Konami's N64 title, Mischief Makers. Or even to the degree of shaping the mechanics of cards, like how the vendetta between Getsufuma and Ryukoki, mortal enemies from Getsufuma Den, is reflected in the destruction effects present in their Yu-Gi-Oh counterparts. Konami draws upon a wide library of video games for inspiration, but Japanese and other pop culture media has influenced the game, most notably anime and manga. Let's start with video games, and what better place than the controller? Enemy controller takes influence from Sega's console controllers, with the button layout from the Sega Genesis controller, while the controller shape is closer to that of the Dreamcast, with the notable feature that the cord comes out of the bottom of the controller. On top of that, the anime portrayal of this card features Kaiba using the Konami code, a button sequence sometimes called the Contra code from the NES title Contra. The code is featured in many games with varied effects. For instance, in Contra it gives the player 30 lives. Regarding other games, since the NES era, Konami has been renowned for space shooters, even to the degree of leaning into the memes and printing a card called Do a Barrel Roll! borrowing Peppy's line from the Star Fox series. Outside of Star Fox, Gradius might be Konami's most famous space shooter. The English name of the card Gradius is actually a misnomer, as Gradius refers to the planet, while the fighter jet-like ship is named the Vic Viper. This is later corrected with the retrained card Victory Viper XX03. Power-ups from the game are reflecting it in cards like Gradius Option and Cyclone Laser while the bosses appear in the BES series of high-leveled machine monsters. Even some of the more obscure enemies are translated into Yu-Gi-Oh, with cards like Ambitious Gopher, Gaia Soul the Combustible Collective, and Space Mambo. A version of Space Mambo actually appears in the Gradius spin-off series of Parodius, where instead of a super weapon from an ancient civilization, the game features a nimble sunfish. I think the best reflection of the whimsical nature of the franchise is within the airplane union monsters, Koitsu, Soitsu, Aitsu, and Doitsu, where there is an element of humor lost in translation, as the Japanese names translate to this guy, that guy, that other guy, and which guy? Speaking of lost in translation, the Japanese name for Jinzo is Jinzo Nigen Psycho Shaka with the English card reflecting only the first two syllables of what translates to Android. The remainder of the card name is a transliteration of the English words Psycho and Shocker. This strengthens the link between the card and a boss from the Metal Gear series named Psycho Mantis. This is not the only time Metal Gear has been featured in Yu-Gi-Oh! as the card Tactical Espionage Agent depicts Solid Snake and borrows directly from the name of the first Metal Gear Solid game. Ganbare Goemon bridges the gap between video games and anime, taking the characters from the Legend of the Mystical Ninja franchise to the small screen. Four of the main characters saw translation into the TCG as well, with the cards Gogo the Gallant Ninja, Lady Ninja Ye, Masked Ninja Ebisu, and four versions of Sasuke Samurai. It was actually pretty common for older cards to have multiple versions, like with Change Slime and Gruesome Goo. The fluid, malleable bodies with blades remind me of the Parasites from Parasite the Maximum. Here's a picture of Migi for comparison. This is moving away from Konami's own intellectual property and more into general Japanese pop culture. Although, some of the more influential anime from the 90s did cross cultural and language barriers. Notably, the huge success of Sailor Moon, which is an excellent example of magical girl transformations. Metal Foe's fusion depicts this event, but the exact source it references is unclear. Maybe it's a reference to the Purry Purry transform sequence from One Punch Man. Also of dubious origin is the card Dark Crusader. The armor doesn't quite match guts with either the Black Swordsman or the Berserker male. Though, the sword is definitely reminiscent of the Dragon Slayer, 
the massive sword wielded by Guts and Berserk. The title Berserk also pops up in a few cards like Berserker Soul, but also the magic card Berserk. As a small tangent, there is one other magic card that really reminds me of Berserk, but it involves a minor spoiler, so here's the warning. The card Rook Egg reminds me of the scene in which Fimpto emerges from the Beharit-shaped egg. The color palette and shape is spot on, but this might just be a coincidence. I want to end on one last anime which influenced Yu-Gi-Oh! One so subtle that you might not have noticed. Yu-Gi-Oh! There are three cards which embody the themes of the anime, illustrated with the main cast of characters. Unity uses the strength of others to power up a monster, which sort of reminds me of the symbol of friendship seen from the Dual Monsters arc. Speaking of friendship, Yujo friendship is based on Joey and Yugi's relationship, and mechanically, if you remind your opponent of your shared unity, or if they are just feeling generous, you two shake hands and share life points. Finally, Judgment of the Pharaoh represents the darkness of a penalty game. At a high cost to the player, there's a choice of effects. If you draw upon your bonds of friendship, you turn off monsters. If you draw upon unity, you shut off spells and traps. Both options very strong. It is always interesting to take a step back from the mechanics of the game every once in a while, and explore the rabbit hole of Yu-Gi-Oh! influences. And this is just the beginning.